right, the bird is the word here in game number, or start number, I should say. I believe it is start number four against the Texas Rangers. He's gone against Cleveland. He's gone against Boston. He's gone against Milwaukee. So he's taken on the AL East. Now he makes his first trek into the AL West. And we head to Arlington Stadium, deep in the heart of Texas. And so we take it on the Texas Rangers. And he'll be opposed on the mound by right-hander Burt Behome Bly Levin. He uh, was no slouch himself. He was 13-16, and 16, but his ERA was only 287. So let's look at the lineups very quickly for this game. Leading off will be Chuck Scrivener at short, Dan Myers in left, Rusty Stobbs in right, Horton's a DH, Ogilvy at center, Thompson at first, Rodriguez at third, Kim catching, Sutherland at second. For the Rangers, Gene Klein's in left, Greg Pryor at second, Mike Hargrove at first, Toby Harris at short, Jeff Burrows in right, Roy Howell at third, Tom Grieve the DH, Juan Benitez at center, and Jim Sunberg the catcher. And before I get going, I wanted to... Uh, for those that aren't familiar that much with inside pitch, these cards are pretty good, pretty good quality, pretty shiny, pretty neat looking. These are the printed sets that you can buy, but you can also order uh, PDFs. So if we take a PDF card, say of the 1967 Orioles, because I bought the 67 set PDF, if we take a, let's take the Gene Klein's card, which is the printed set for Texas. And we put it beside the Frank Robinson card that I cut out. You can see the size pretty much. I cut it, and it's probably the way I'm printing. I could probably set it up to be the same size as the other cards, but it's very, very comparable. The colors are still quite there. You don't get the glossy shine necessarily because I'm using 110 pound cardstock, and I'm not. This is like a perforated cardstock, I think. So I'm not sure what they use exactly, but they're definitely serviceable. Um, you know, it will cost you a little bit of ink and paper and some sweat equity to cut everything out. But, uh, you know, the PDFs run about 15 bucks, whereas the printed sets run about 55. So, uh, even if you print out, and in my case with 67, I'm really only interested in the American League. So I didn't want to buy the whole thing and, and kind of waste the National League. So I printed out just the American League 1967, those, uh, 10 teams and, uh, you know, it worked out pretty well for me. So, I mean, it's just another option. Just throwing that out there. Uh, some people, you know, swear by the printed sets only. So, I certainly understand that as well. But for those that might be on a tighter budget and don't mind, I mean, you will, like I said, you will spend it in the ink. But in overall, you're still going to save money um, by doing the PDF version. So, and the, also the other thing, uh, not every card is carded in the set you buy, but they, they, on the website there are downloads of the extra players. So I downloaded Greg Pryor. He's not, you know, I printed him in black and white, obviously on regular standard printer paper. So, um, but really all I want is the information. I don't really care about the coloring necessarily. So Mark Pryor, uh, Greg Pryor, uh, only had eight at bats all year, but he was he was a starter in this game, so that's why he's in there. So let's get everything in position. Hopefully I can get everything in position where everybody can see it fairly well. I may have to sh shuffle the uh, stand here to get everything in. I'm going to leave the stadium card to the side uh, and bring it in only when it's necessary so I can have more room for the batter cards and the pitcher cards. So we've got Chuck Scrivener who takes over for Tom Verizer. He gets to start it short today. And let me go. I'm <laughs> You know what? I got all this stuff set up. I got the music set up. I had all these little accoutrements set up. And the one thing, one thing I forgot to get was the dice. So let me pause the video and get the dice. Okay, we are back. Uh, you want to talk about feeling silly. <laughs> get everything set up and you reach for the dice and they're not there. But I got them now. So we're, we're ready to go. And the first batter is Chuck Scrivener against Burt Bly Levin. And we are underway. And I'm going to try this. It's probably a mistake on my part to do it. But I am going to try the strategy rolls when a guy is on first base only. Not when he's on second or third, but just when he's on first. I'm going to try the strategy roll when a guy's on first um, just to see how it goes and see if we can't uh, 
get this to work without being too ridiculous. So we'll see how it goes when we get there. Here's Chuck Scrivener. It's a 2-6 on Bly 11. That's a range play at the ballpark. So we need to bring in Arlington Stadium right away. And we get a 6-5, which is a pop-up to the catcher. So the catcher in this case is Sunberg. His range is a 5. You can see it right there. His range is a 5 right there. So we're going to roll and see if he can make that play. And he does. So it's a pop-out to Sunberg. And there's one away as Scribner is retired. Brings up the next man up is Dan Meyer, the left fielder. Get a 6-1. That's blank for Bly Levin. The Myers card. 1-5. That's a fly to right. So two up, two down go the Tigers. And that'll bring up Rusty Staub. 6-4. Potential strikeout. Stobbs only a six though, and that's a twelve. So even uh, the stadium has a, has no has a plus one, but it only makes him a seven. So not nearly enough. Go to Stobbs card, and we get a one one. And that's ground ball to second. So three up, three down. Go the Tigers in the first as Bly Levin sets them down. One two three, and that'll bring up the bird. The bird is the word. Mark Fidrich. He will be starting things off against. Gene Kleins of the Rangers. Kleins playing left field today. See what Fidrich can do. He's had two good starts in a row. See if he can keep it up. And we got a 6-2, which is another range play at Arlington Stadium. And we get a 5-6. That is a ground ball to first. Checking the range of the first baseman, Jason Thompson. And his range is a 3. That's a 2, so he does make the play. So there's one away, and that brings up the next man in line, and it is the little card I had to print for Greg Pryor. 2-4 on Fidrich is a possible throwing error if there's a throw necessary. Go to Pryor's card, 6-1. Six, 6-1's one. Six, a fly to left, so there is no throw means there is no error, and there's two down. Brings up Mike Hargrove, the human rain delay. Fidrich, a 5-5, is a strikeout chance, but it's only an 8 on Hargrove. Stadium makes it a 9, but the 15 is way out of range. 3-4, three, 3-4 four. Three, four is a single pass second base for Hargrove, so Hargrove, a 2-out single, brings up Toby Hera. Has the distinction of his last name being spelled the same front and forwards and backwards. One of the little oddities there. 3-6 is a strikeout chance against a righty. But it's an 18, so that's way out of range. Go to Harris card. 4-1 is a single pass or single to center field. Now we'll check runner advancement. There are two outs, so the runner does get a boost. Hargrove. Hargrove, his BR rating is a 2. That makes it a 3 since there's two outs. And let's check the center fielder arm. Center fielder arm is a 0, Oglevy. So to go from first to third on a single to center... You actually lose one on the chart, so that cancels out the two out advantage, so that's still a net zero there. So the net zero means we've got a BR rating of two for Hargrove, so he has to get a two or a one to make it. And he does, so Hargrove hustles his way over to third base. Runners are at the corners with two outs, and I forgot to do the strategy roll, my bad. I'll see if I can remember it next time. I don't know if I want to do it Right now, uh, Burroughs, let's see here, Hera, his attempt is a 1, Fidrich is a 0, so I think uh, nothing's going to happen on the attempt there, so here we go, 3-2, blank for Fidrich, we'll go to Burroughs, 5-1, fly to center, and that's going to end the inning. So I'll try to remember to do the strategy rolls, it's kind of like... I kind of don't want to do it. I kind of want to do it, but I don't want to look silly doing it. So it's kind of betwixt and between. So now we go to the top of the second for Willie Horton. 3-5 is a potential walk. His walk range is a 12 against righties. The ballpark doesn't add anything. It's a 14, so no walk. We get a 4-6. That's a ground ball to short. 
and Horton is retired. Here's Ben Oakley, center fielder. Not sure what's happened to LaFleur, if he's hurt or what's going on, but he just hasn't played in a couple of games. 3-2 is a potential strikeout plus. Well, it's not a potential. It's a strikeout plus against a lefty. His strikeout's a 10. You add 10, it's a 20. So that's a 10 there. That's an automatic strikeout. As Ogilvy goes down on strikes. Here is Jason Thompson. Kind of interesting that on the splits, Blylev must have struck out more lefties. Maybe his curveball or something was more deceptive to lefties. 2-4 is a strikeout chance, and it will be a strikeout. Thompson's a 12, that's a 6, that's a strikeout. So, fly 11. Cruising through two innings. And we go to the bottom of the second, no score. And Roy Thurston Howell III will be leading things off for the Rangers against Fidrich. 6-2 is a range play again at Arlington Stadium. That's a 4-3. 4-3 is a question mark 9, and that's a 2, which would be a single to right field, but we're going to check the range of the right fielder. The range, though, is stop is a 1, so he has to have a 1 to stop this, and he does not, so it's a single to right field for Roy Howell. So now if I want to check his attempt rating, he doesn't have an attempt rating. He can only go on a hit and run because he's got an H there, so... There's no, nothing to check there. They're not doing a hit and run, so Grieve is going to step to the plate. We get a 1-3, and that's a double star line for Fidrich. And, that's a, and we're going to roll and see what the double star line is. It's a 6. That's a fly to center. So there's one away. As Grieve is retired, here's Juan Beniquez. Beniquez, center fielder. 1-5 is a... Home run question mark, and against right-handers, it's a 1-7, to seven, but that's an 8, so there's no home run there. So we go to Benitez's card. 4-2, star line 2, that's a ground ball to short. Check for a double play, he's a 2. Fidrich is a 0, the pivot man is a 0, so this has to be a 1 or a 2. It's a 3, so it's going to be a fielder's choice. 6-4, to four. Benitez beat the relay. So two outs, Benitez is now at first. Now he could possibly run. His attempt rating is a three. So let's see what happens with this. And that's a 14, so nothing going on. So Sun Sunberg is the batter. We get a 5-3, and that's a potential strikeout. His strikeout is a nine, but that's a 12, even with the ballpark making it a 10. It's still out of range. Sunberg, a, and that finally stopped at a 20. Sunberg, a 2-6 is a ground ball to second, and that's going to end the second inning. So, probably not doing the strategy rolls correctly, but I'm still trying to focus in on gameplay more than strategy rolls, so maybe I shouldn't even bother and just stick with the basics of the game until I get it a little bit more down pat. 5-4 is a potential strikeout. It is a strikeout because that's a 10, and that's a 10. The ballpark actually adds one, makes him an 11. So it is a strikeout, and that's three in a row for Bly Levin. As Rodriguez is gone, brings up Mark Fidrich's personal catcher, Bruce Kim. 1-1 one, one is blank for Bly Levin. 4-1 on Kim is a single pass second, so the first base hit of the game for the... Tigers. Now, interestingly enough, Kim's a catcher, but he did have four stolen bases. His attempt is a three, and it's a zero for Blylevin on his uh, hold rating. So it's a three possibility. Ten, nothing's going to happen. So we move on to Gary Sutherland. Three, three is a strikeout chance, and it will be with that being a three there. So Blylevin, another strikeout, two down. And I don't know if you do the uh, strategy roll after every at-bat or whether you do it once while the guy's on first and that's it. So I'm just going to stick with it. I'm not going to keep going back over it again. 6-1 is blank for Bly Levin. 4-4 is a single to left field. 
So Scriv Scrivener comes up with a two out single. Let's check Bruce Kim. Now to get from first to third on a single to left, you lose two. It's a minus two. You do get plus one for there being two outs. So that's a minus one. And Kim's BR rating is a two. So that's, he has to have a one to get to third base. And he does. So how about that? Bruce Kim does sneak it over to first to third base. So he kind of maybe surprised Gene Kleins. Didn't think he was going to go, and he did. So runners at the corners with two outs for Dan Meyer, left fielder. 4-1 is blank for Blylevin. We go to Meyer. 6-4 is a ground ball to first, and that's going to end the inning as Hargrove will take it to the bag himself. And we go to the bottom of the third. Still no score here at Arlington Stadium. Fidrick's back on the bump. We'll be facing Gene Kleins. Top of the order for the Rangers. 2-1 is a possible error. On Kleins, 1-1 one, one is a question mark 9 against the right hander. Only goes to 7, so that's a fly to right. But it is a possible error on Staub. His E rating is only a 5, so it's a good chance that... Uh... Let's see here. Staub should be able to make the play, you would think. And he does not, though. 3 makes... <laughs> Three causes that to be an error. I think that's how that works. Let me pause the video and double check my fielding. Okay, as I suspected, that was an error. An error on Rusty Stobbs. So go to failed error check. Failed error check on a fly to right. So a fly to right, failed error check. It's a trop ball, two base advancement. So a two base advancement Two base error, E9, and that's going to put Gene Kleins at second base with nobody out. Big error there on Rusty Staub. And that'll bring up Greg Pryor. 1-5, possible home run chance. It's a 17 though, so that's out of range. Plus Pryor didn't have any home runs. 1-1 one, one is a fly to center. Now, let's see if the runner can go to second. I'm sorry, go to third on that. Fly outs, runner on second. If it's going to center field, you subtract three from the BR rating. Kleins' BR rating is a three. So that's a zero, so he can't go anywhere. So no advance there. Here's Hargrove. One, two is a strikeout chance. It's an eight. Stadium makes it a nine. This is a nine, so it is a strikeout. So the plus one from Arlington gave Fidrich the strikeout. And there's two away for Toby Hera. Two outs and Klein still perched on second. 6-3 is a strikeout chance, and it will be. That's a six. Plus one from the stadium makes it a seven, and this is a seven. So Arlington Stadium gave Fidrich two consecutive strikeouts. And that leadoff two-base error does not come back to bite him. We go to the fourth, it's no score. And Rusty Staub back out to give a go at Burt Blylevin, who kind of breezed through the first three innings. 2-5 is blank because he's not tired. 6-3 is a star line four. That is a ground ball to short. Handled by Hera, one away. That'll bring up Willie Horton, DH. 2-3 is a potential walk. Horton's a 12, though. Nothing from the stadium. That's a 14. There's no walk. 2-1 on Horton's card is a ground ball to third. Handled by Howell. And it's two down. Two up, two down. And it's going to bring up Ben Oglevy. 1-6 is a strikeout chance. This is a 9. His number is a 10, so that is a strikeout. Plus, stadium gives him 11, so... Even more of a strikeout, if there is such a thing. And the inning is over. One, two, three, go the Tigers. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still no score. And it'll be Jeff Burrows, right fielder, leading off for the Rangers. It's a 3-5. Three, 3-5 five. Three, five is blank on Fidrich. Burrows, a 3-6. And against a lefty, it would have been a double to left. But against a righty, it's a fly to left. And there's one away. Roy Howell. 
steps to the plate. See what he can do. Five six is a error. If there's a if there's a ground out, it's a potential error. One four, and there is a ground out to short, so we're checking the error of the shortstop Scrivener. He's a ten. But that's a sixteen. He will make the play. So two down. Brings up Tom Grieve. One two. Fidget strikeout chance. Greaves a 15, that's a 13, it's a strikeout. And the inning's over, so four innings in the books and nothing nothing happening offensively for either team right now. We go to the fifth, and it'll be Bly Levin again in this pitching duel. 5-1 is an error on a potential ground out, and the batter is Thompson, in case you're curious. So 5-1 is an error on a potential ground out. 1-6, there is no ground out, it's a fly to left meaning there is no error, and there's one away. It brings up Aurelio Rodriguez. 6-5. Six, 6-5 five. Six, is a wild pitch. I'm sorry, it's a strikeout chance. You know what? I don't remember if that 19 was there or whether I grabbed him and moved the number. So you know what? I'm going to re-roll the D20 because I don't know what it really was. It's a 14, so there is no strikeout chance. We'll go to Rodriguez's card. It's a 6-2. That's a star line six, which means it's a ground ball to short. Kind of prematurely grabbed that, thinking it was a wild pitch and I had to re-roll, but I misread it. It was 6-5, not 6-6. Six, six. All right, so two down, bases empty for Bruce Kim. 1-6 is a strikeout chance. That's a three. It's definitely a strikeout. And the inning is over. So we go to the bottom of the fifth. We're just rolling out right along here. Bottom of the fifth. Fidrich's back out there to face Juan Beniquez. 6-5 is a range play. And that's a 2-4. Two, 2-4 four. Two, four is a fly to center, so we're checking the range on Ogilvy. And his range is a 2, so this might drop in. And it does, so we'll check a failed range play. And we're going to roll one more to see if it's a single or a double. It's a 1, so it's only a single. So it drops in for a single for Juan Beniquez. And we'll look at his attempt rating. He's a three. So let's see if he tries to do any stealing or anything. He does not. So now we move on. And the next batter up is Jim Sunberg. That is a 5-1 on Fidrich, and that's the ballpark chart. Arlington Stadium, 6-4. Six, 6-4 six, is a star line 3, which on Fidrich is a ground ball to first, which means we have a possible double play. 2 for Sunberg. Nothing from Fidrich. It's a 5, so it's a fielder's choice. So that is a, let's see here, I believe it's a 4-6 fielder's choice. Or was that a 3-6? Well, I'm drawing a blank on where the ball just went. I think it was star line three. I think it was, I think it was the first. I think it's a three six, if I remember correctly. Because we didn't even check the pivot. So three six, fielder's choice. Sunberg is aboard with one out for Gene Kleins. Sunberg's attempt is a four. So let's see if he can do anything with that. He does not. So we'll roll on. Kleins, four four. And a four four is blank. So we go to Kleins. 6-5 is a star line one. It's a ground ball to second. Another chance for a double play. He's a three. So one, two, or three, it's a double play. And it is. So the double play. And we will call that one 4-6-3. And that's going to also end the inning. So we go to the sixth. Still scoreless. I may have to give up on the strategy roll thing because I don't think I'm doing it right for one. It's kind of messing up my rhythm for two. So I may have to wait on that until I actually get more comfortable with the game. So I apologize for those folks that really like the strategy rolls. I'm just going to think I'm just going to stick with the game for now. Maybe when I get to game 10 or so, I'll feel more comfortable doing it. If I play some games offline, maybe I'll feel more comfortable doing it as well. 6 3 is the ballpark card. 2-2 on Arlington. 2-2 is a ground ball in front of the plate, so it's a 
little nubber that Thunberg feels and throws to first for out number one. Top of the order and Chuck Scrivener. Scrivener, a 6-1 is blank for Bly Levin. 3-2 is ground ball to second, so that's two down. Two out spaces empty for Dan Meyer. 3-6 is a home run chance. And against a lefty, that's a 1-10, to 10, and that is a 1. So there's a home run chance. Now Meyer's home run chance is a 3. So we're going to roll and see if we get a 3 or not. And we don't, so now we go to Meyer's card. No home run. 4-2 is still going to be a single to left, though. So it's a 2-out single for Dan Meyer. But at least Bly Levin kept him from getting the homer. Here's Rusty Staub. 6-1 is blank on Bly Levin. Stop, 2-3, star line 5, that's a ground ball to, sh to uh, second to end the inning. Go to the bottom of the 6, still nothing but goose eggs on the scoreboard. Pitchers back out there and Greg Pryor to lead things off. 6-4, six, 6-4 four. Six, four is a double question mark. Gets the right hander, double question mark, 1-16 to 16 is a star line, that's a 1, so we definitely have the star line. It's a one, so it's a ground ball to second. One away. Brings up Mike Hargrove. Two, three, and that's blank since he's a lefty. Go to Hargrove's card. Six, six is a fly to center. That's out number two. And we got Toby last hurrah, or Hera. Toby Hera. Not hurrah, but Hera. 5-5, five, five, that's a strikeout chance, but it's a 17, so not going to happen. Go to Harris card, 5-3, fly to center. Innings over, so six innings in the books, and nothing's been settled. It's still zip-zip, and both pitchers still going strong. They both can face 34 batters before fatigue sets in. Right now, uh, Blylevin's only faced 21 and Fitchers has only faced 22, so they're still good to go for a couple more innings, I would assume. Here is Horton. 1-6 is a strikeout chance, and that 2 on the D20 means it's a strikeout. As we start at the top of the 7th with a strikeout, here's Ben Oglevy. This game may end on a solo home run the way it's going. 5-2 strikeout chance, but a 17's too high. Go to Oglevy's card. 5-6 is a ground ball to 3rd. Two down, because it doesn't seem like anybody can put mass a couple of hits together, so it may take just one long ball to do it. 1-1 one, one is blank for Blylevin. Jason Thompson, a 2-2. Two, two. Question mark 8. You can say right-hander. That's a 2. That's a single. So that is a single for Thompson. If he'd have gotten a 14 through 17, it would have been that home run, but a 2 was a single. Brings up Aurelio Rodriguez. 3-6. Home run chance, 1 to 16, so that's a that passes that test. Rodriguez needs a 1 to 6 to get that home run and put the Tigers on the board. And he does, it's a 2, so Aurelio Rodriguez with a 2 run homer. And the Tigers grab a 2 nothing lead, all this with 2 outs and the bases empty. And a single and a 2 run homer. 8 home runs on the season for Rodriguez, and that was a big one right there. Brings up Bruce Kim as Bly Levin. Still in a little bit of shock after that. 3-3 three, three is a strikeout chance, but 17's too high. Go to Kim's card. 2-4, ground ball to first, innings over. But the damage was done. The two-run homer from Aurelio Rodriguez, known more for his fielding than his hitting. But he came through in a big way right there. Gives the Tigers a 2-0 lead as we go to the 7th inning stretch for Jeff Burrows. Let's see if Fidrich has a little more energy now with that run support. 2-2 two, two is blank for Fidrich. Go to Burroughs. 3-1 as a single to right. So here come the Rangers. Single to right field. Burroughs is aboard. Here's Roy Howell. Left-handed hitting third baseman. He had eight home runs on the season. And if it gets a home run check, he's got an 11 here. If it gets to that. 1-2. Strikeout chance. But he's going to strike out. That's a 15 Plus one from Arlington Stadium makes it a 16. That is a 16. So Howell may be going for the downs, and he missed and came up with air. 
It is a strikeout. And here's Tom Grieve, DH. 5-4 is a range check, range play. And that's a 6-3, which is a star line one, which is a ground ball to second. So we're doing the range of Sutherland. He is a three. And if he makes it, we check for a double play. But he doesn't make it. It's a base hit. So a failed range check. Failed range check is just an S4. So now we need to see about runner advancement. A runner on first. Going from first to third on the S4. Needs a 3 through 6 BR rating. Burroughs. BR rating is only a 2. So there's not two outs. He doesn't get a boost. So he's going to have to hold at second base on that single. But runners at first and second with one out for Juan Beniquez. Juan Beniquez. 6-6 six, six is blank for Fidrich. Beniquez, 3-1. 3-1 is a star line 5, which is a ground ball to 3rd. Could be a double play. 2 on the double play rating. And it is a 2, so it is a double play. 5-4-3 around the horn. And Fitch's defense pulls him out of that jam. And the innings over is Aurelio Rodriguez. Started that double play. He had the home run. Now he starts the double play. So he so far has been Mark Fitch's best friend. We start the eighth. Bly Levin's still in there. Face Sutherland. 6 3 is a ballpark check on Arlington Stadium. 5 4. 5 4 is a double to left field for Sutherland. So he gets a leadoff double from the nine position. You don't usually expect much out of your number nine hitter, but he got it right there. Here's Scrivener. Looking to see if he can't move the runner up. 2 2 is blank for Bly Levin. We get a 1-1. One, one. That's a single pass third base. So a single pass third base for Scrivener. Let's check runner advancement to go from second to home on an S5. You need a 5 through 6 BR rating. And Sutherland, his BR rating is only a 2, so he will not get there. He will stop at third. So runners are at the corners. Nobody out for Dan Meyer. And the bullpen working for Texas. Bly Levin trying to get out of this. Infield, infield's really in at this point because they can't afford another run. 5-6 is a potential walk, and it will be a walk because that's a 3. So the bases are now loaded with nobody out. And Rusty Staub, the batter, and that's going to be it for Bly Levin. They're going to make the move to a lefty out of the bullpen. They're going to go to Jim. Let's see here. Are they going to Jim Umbarger? I thought that's who they were going to. Actually, no, they're going to Joe Horner. Joe Horner is in, a lefty. He will be the new pitcher. And he inherits a bases loaded situation with nobody out. All the runners are Bly Levin's responsibility. Rusty Staub, the batter. Infield is in. Try to cut the run off at the plate. 6-5. Six, 6-5 five. Six, five is blank against a lefty. Would have been a strikeout against a righty. Staub's card, 4-2. 4-2 is a pop out to first, so that definitely helps him out. That freezes everybody right there, one away. Now you could play double play depth because Willie Horton has a 5 double play rating. So they're going to play double play depth right here. 1-2 is a strikeout chance, but it's a 19, so no strikeout. Go to Horton's card. 2-3. Two, 2-3 three. Two, three is a fly to left. Let's see if it's a sacrifice fly. He's got a 2 rating for sacrifice fly. But it's a three, so he misses that. So now we go to the throw chart. And let's see what we get on the throw chart. BR and outfielder's arm come into play. So the BR, the lead runner, Sutherland, has a two. And the left fielder, Kleins, has a zero arm. So it's still just a two there. So let's see if I remember how that's done throw chart. Let's find the throw chart here. There we go. Throw chart. So let's see what we get. That's a six. So on a six, it says here, 
check second die roll of six chart. So we're going to the second die roll. And we get a four. And I hope I'm doing this correctly. On the second die roll, it says that if the die rolled is greater than the BR, then the lead runner advances. If roll is higher, the trailing runner holds. That says second runner advance, but not second throw. So this is where this is the part I'm getting a little confused on, and I'm not really sure how it's done. He failed on the sacrifice fly. We rolled a six, which the throw chart says go to your second die roll chart six. So second die roll is this over here. So. says here, lead runner thrown out. If the trail runners BR, see, I'm not sure this is all correct. I'm going to call it that he does not advance because the sacrifice fly rating failed. I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure that's not correct, but I don't have time to <laughs> debate it right now. It's, that's one of the, this is one of the parts of the game that gets a little confusing to me and, and why I initially didn't like the game a while back and I'm finally getting into it again, but there's these little small little details that get in my way and bog the game down for me. But other than that, it's a great game. Here's, and once I get these rules down right, then it'll be simple. But right now I don't have those down right, which is why I'm not doing the strategy rules. Five, six for Horner is blank. We go to Ogilvy's card. Three, one is a fly to right, and that's gonna end the inning with no runs scored. And like I said, I hope I did that correctly. I, I got a feeling that should have been a sack fly, but I, you know, I'd rather err on the side of not having the sack fly than give him the sack fly when I'm not sure. So that's just the way that went. Tigers don't score here in the eighth. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. Fidrick's back out there holding on to that two nothing lead. We'll be facing Sunbird. And we get a 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three on Fidrich is the ballpark card again. Arlington Stadium. 3-4. Three, 3-4 four. Three, four is a fly to right. One away. And now we go back to the top of the order. For Gene Kleins. That is a 1-5, which is a home run question mark, but that's an 18, so it's out of range. Kleins, 3-3, three, three, ground ball to short, two down. So two outs, base is empty, and here is Greg Pryor. 2-2 two, two is a blank for Fidrich. Go to Pryor's card. 4-5. Four, 4-5 five. Four, five is a single to left. So Greg Pryor. Singles, he only had eight at bats, but he did hit 375, so you're going to give up hits, I guess, on his card. So he's aboard with two outs, and here's Mike Hargrove. 2 1 is a possible error. Hargrove's card is a 1 5. 1 5 is a star line 1, which is a ground ball to second, so we're checking the error rating of Sutherland. This has to be a 9 or greater for him to make the play, and it is, so he does make the play, and the inning is over. So we go to the ninth, still 2-0 in favor of the Tigers as Fidrich is going for the shutout, complete game shutout if he can get it. Horner still in there against Jason Thompson. They do have right-hander, they do have a right-hander, Steve Falcout, and he will be coming in after Thompson's at bat because we've got righties coming up. So this is Horner's last batter faced. 2-3. 2-3 is blank for Horner. Thompson, 1-5. Ground ball to second. One away. And now we'll make that move to the bullpen and bring in Steve Falcout. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Falcout. Falcout. I think it's Falcout. But he will be in to face the right-handers, Rodriguez and Kim, here in the top of the ninth. It's 2-2, and that is a potential walk, but it's a 19, so there's no walk. We'll go to Rodriguez. 
6-1. That's a single pass second base for Rodriguez. So Rodriguez continues his hot hitting. Here's Bruce Kim. Got a 4-6. 4-6, and that was a 5 on the D20. 4-6 is a double question mark against a righty. That's a star line. So let's see what the star line is. It is a 3, which is a ground ball to third. Potential double play. Kim's a 2. Pivot man at second's a 0. So it is a fielder's choice. So that is a 5-4 fielder's choice. Two down. Runner at first now is Kim for Ben Oglevy. 4-2. Blank for Falcao. Oglevy. 4-5. Is a single pass, a single to center field, rather. So let's see what can happen here with Kim. On an S8 to go from first to third is a minus one. You get plus one for there being two outs. So that makes Kim's rating a two. So it has to be a one or a two for him to advance. And it is, so Kim will make it to third. So two down. Wait a minute, what is Ogilvy wasn't the one batting? How did he get stuck in there? I got Ogilvy's card. That should have been Sutherland's at bat. My bad. So instead of a single to center field, it was a 4-5. So the 4-5 is actually a single pass third for Sutherland. So he still gets the single. But now we need to check base running. You have to have a, a 6 to get to third. So Kim will stay at second. He will not be at third. I don't know how that card got out of place there, but somehow it did. So I'm glad I caught that. That was Sutherland's at bat, not Ogilvy's at bat. All right, got it all straight here. Scrivener, two on, two outs. Five, one is nothing because he's not tired. Scrivener, five, six. Against the lefty, it would have been a double, but against the righty, it's a fly to right. So it's a good thing they had Falcao in there and not Horner. Innings over. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Last chance for the Rangers against Fidrich. Fidrich going for the complete game shutout. They do have... Action in their bullpen. They do have their closer. John Hiller is loosening in the bullpen. He had 13 saves on the season in case Fidget should falter. Again, he can face 34 batters. And to this point, he has faced 30. So he's around the cusp, depending on how he does in the bottom of the ninth. Here's Toby Harrod to lead things off. 4-6. It's a hit-by-pitch chance, but you lose 4 for Fidget. So his hit-by-pitch is actually a negative 1. So that's not going to cut it. Or do you take four away from the D20? That's the other thing. So that's the difference between a hit by pitch and not. Because if it's negative four based on this D20 roll, that makes that a three. He is a three. That's hit by a pitch. So I do believe that that's actually a hit by pitch. Let me pause the video and check it out and be sure. All right. I'm not sure if this is the way I'm interpreting it correctly or not. But the way the rules state, it says... Possible hit by pitch, roll one D20 versus batters, hit by pitch rate, adjusted by pitcher's hit by pitch rate. So to me, Hera has a hit by pitch rate of three. Since Fidrich is a minus four, that makes him a minus one, so there's no hit by pitch. That's the way I'm interpreting it. If it's wrong, somebody please tell me. So we go to Hera's card instead. Six five, he's still going to get a base hit. It's a single to right, so he's still going to get on base. But hopefully I did that correctly in not having the hit by pitch. Here's Burroughs. This could be Fidrich's last batter faced. 3-2 is a potential... No, it's blank, rather. Here's Burroughs. 4-3. Four, 4-3 three. Four, three is a pop-up to short, so that's one away. Now, do you let Fidrich stay in against the lefty Howell, or do you keep Howell in there? Or keep Fidrich in there? They're going to keep Fidrich. they give him one more chance. 2-3 is a potential strikeout, but it's blank against the lefty. Go to Howell's card, 3-6. Three, 3-6 six. Three, six is a ground ball to third. That's a chance for any for a game-ending double play, but it's a 2. So this has to be a 1 or a 2. It's a 6, so the runner's actually going to advance. So it's a 5-3 ground out for out number 2. Hera does go to second base, but his run doesn't matter. It's the runner at the batter at the plate that matters. That's Grieve. He's a time, he's the tying run. So here's Fidrich. Two outs in the ninth, 3-5. 3-5 is blank for Fidrich. Here is Grieve. 5-1. Star line 3. That's ground ball to first. Ball game's over. So Fidrich hangs on for a 2-0 victory over Texas. 
They won that game. Detroit won the game three to two in real life. They won it here, two to nothing. So that's going to do it from here. I'm up to 45 minutes, and I think my video is about to run out. So, Fidrich again is the word. The bird is the word. He gets the shutout victory. So when we come up for game five, we will have the totals for Fidrich in real life versus what he's done through the replay. So until next time, hope you all enjoyed that presentation of Inside Pitch, and please let me know the errors I made on charts and so forth so I can tighten up my game. And I appreciate you all watching. Until next time, I will see you all down the road.